Hi everyone again uh, welcome to welcome to this lecture um, this is again the I want to remind you that uh, the class that we are talking about is uh, Linux programming and scripting uh, today we are going to continue our lecture on Perl um, we covered a lot of uh, things about Perl uh, so far um, we started with just um, uh, doing some uh, really simple programming uh, with Perl uh, then we went into more uh, kind of like we started uh, learning about the data structure. Um, we learned a couple of them. One is the main data structure that um, that is pretty much the workhorse of uh, Perl is the scalars. We learned about scalars, and then um, we went into the arrays. Um, uh, actually, in between, we also learned about strings. Uh, we touched upon it. I think, like I mean, there is more to strings uh, that we will be seeing in the future classes in a couple of future classes. But um, now we will be we are talking about arrays, and I want to continue our discussion on arrays. And uh, today, I will be finishing up with arrays uh, so that you have a good understanding of uh, how to represent arrays, how to use arrays in your programs, and. Um, how to uh, manipulate um, um, various data using arrays. So all these things are uh, uh, the key things, uh, key learning um, objectives uh, from this uh, session. Uh, so before I start um, with uh, today's lecture, I want to uh, give you a brief uh, recap um, of. Um, um, Of um, the um, what we um, learned um, uh, in the last uh, lecture. So um, let's begin with that discussion. Um, So um, in the last lecture we first start, uh, started talking about the range operator I hope you remember uh, the range operator which is the two dots which represents essentially um, a range of numbers uh, and it has two contexts that we talked about one was this an array context and the other one is the scalar context and what is the difference between those two that also we understood. Um, basically in the scalar context it also has the boolean nature so that it actually returns a, a true or false value so that is one thing that we talked about then we went into uh, arrays in more details um, we understood how to specify an array and how the array literal uh, works basically what are the rules governing it uh, in terms of uh, putting a dollar in front and then uh, it needs to be in a square bracket uh, that we need to specify, um, and then array itself, but the elements are specified in a, um, the um, um, the regular brackets basically, and then um, we can specify each and every element inside that array, and then uh, uh, work on that, and then they are addressed using this um, the index indices or index basically, which is uh, specified in the square bracket. Uh, then we also talked about uh, slice um, I just wanted to remind you about slice uh, let us just quickly look into the uh, the slice uh, operator. Um, so the slice is essentially um, um, we it is a shorthand representation of multiple elements of an array um, so here um, this is something that we talked about um, basically um, um, the at sign or the ampersand sign with the the name, and then we can specify multiple elements um, as just with comma separated ones. And um, essentially, like I mean, that specifies which are the various elements uh, of that array. And we also noted uh, some of the rules governing the slice. Basically, first of all, the the indices need not be increasing. And the indices need not be different. Basically, the same indices also constitutes um, the slice. Um, then we 
looked at uh, um, uh, the stack essentially. Uh, stack, as I mentioned, basically uh, it's a set of memory, basically which are um, which is stackable. You can say, like meaning, it has a property of um, last in, first out. Um, so that's what this LIFO means, basically last in, first out. Uh, which means that essentially the elements that are added first comes out the last and the last one that is added into the stack comes out the first and the operation for uh, putting an element in a stack and then removing the element in a stack the so two two things one is pushing the putting the element inside the uh, stack is known as push push operator and then when you are removing the element from the stack we use a pop operator to remove and here you see one key thing key difference between this and then regular arrays you do not specify any kind of index so you just say push at list and then that is assigned to a new element and then so basically it knows that whatever is last that you added that element is actually like I mean so the new element is added as the the top of the uh, array essentially and it automatically increments the index but the index is unknown to the user so the user only sees the only one element of the stack and then uh, here is uh, the pop usage of the pop uh, uh, one basically where we are assigning uh, the pop at list to the this variable uh, dollar top and again what this does is you do not need to worry about okay whether it is index 100, index 150 whatever it is but the top of the element or the last added element is just popped and then it is put inside this new variable dollar top. So this is something that we learned and then we saw some examples of this and More, more, more things basically that we saw. Uh, then we looked at this uh, shift and unshift. Uh, again, these are some of the key elements essentially, which is kind of this one is like uh, opposite of uh, push and pop. It's very similar, but it's kind of opposite in the sense that um, the shift is essentially like to the added the the element is added to the lower end of the array instead of the the top of the array. So the last element is in, in uh, is incremented. Last index is incremented, and then it's added to that. Um, so here, shift means basically like the last one that is got added um, that gets um, um, popped out, basically, and then um, it uh, goes into the uh, array, and then the array is kept as is, essentially, like without that. And then unshift essentially, like I mean, it puts back that at the top. So these are some of the useful commands essentially. Like I mean, so when we say like unshift uh, four five, actually, like I mean, you can see that basically like the ninety nine is pushed, and then the four and five are added at the end. And then we also saw some examples of uh, the shift command. Uh, here is some of the some more essentially um, um, we are putting the the thing inside that and then uh, we are also like shifting where the dollar x will get last as the value and then uh, essentially the remaining uh, um, um, array will be intact. So uh, that is the uh, the recap from uh, the last lecture. Uh, um, now we are going into uh, the today's lecture we will continue with the arrays I want to introduce a couple of new things uh, to you guys basically so let us see um, the first one is uh, the reverse operator um, reverse is essentially used to reverse uh, a complete uh, an array um, with all the indexes or indices uh, completely reversed. So, um, so in this array for example so the dollar a is 0 1 2 3 so this one you can say like it's the dollar a 0th element 
this is dollar a 1 etc and this one is like dollar a 3 so now we say the the new array at b is reverse of at a uh, one thing you notice is essentially like when you declare a new array we don't have to declare it up front we can directly make that assignment in the modern Perl actually we use uh, my as uh, uh, a moniker for uh, specifying a variable um, it is it's a good practice to actually um, even if you are um, directly using it to specify the array with the, the, the my uh, uh, in, in front so this is this becomes like my and then uh, at b equal to so this is a good practice whenever you are using the at b for the first time use the my then um, Perl knows that actually it needs to allocate the memory for this um, variable. So now let us look at this uh, essentially so when we say uh, reverse uh, so we are assigning this as a reverse so now for B0 that value is uh, 3 and B1 is 2 and B3 is actually zero. All all have a dollar in front. Um, so in this example, we are printing uh, the a corresponding a from zero to three. Um, you can see that it's actually like zero to three. Um, the values themselves. Whereas for b, the b zero corresponds to three, and then b three corresponds to zero. So we basically like I mean uh, the way to print out this is essentially like I mean you can uh, specify like uh, I, I hope I mean you remember all these things already. So um, when we escape this character essentially um, uh, we just print directly like at B and then uh, here this is literal because it is all inside the code so it will not do this operation. Um, it just prints out the same value, but when we when it sees this portion, this it converts it into its array, and that is uh, zero one two three. So um, it basically, like I mean, this is uh, also like the way that you can write out uh, this uh, assignment. Okay, and then the other uh, key function is the sort function. This is another one that you will be using more often. In um, in this uh, in the real world, uh, so here an array is given um, seven one nine three, and then um, we say like okay um, at B is sort at A. So now if we print out that B, it prints out one three seven nine. So you can see that actually it's it sorted the the A. In an ascending way, so this is an ascending sort. And then uh, it prints out one, two, three, uh, one, three, seven, nine. Um, and then the A is actually like I mean you can see that actually it's kept the same thing basically. Like I mean. So, so the question for you is uh, how do you uh, do a descending order sort? Um, Think about it. Uh, what can we do for a descending order sort? So, one quick uh, solution could be that um, we can just uh, use this first sort the A, and then basically like uh, reverse it essentially, or you can say like that B equal to reverse sort at A. So this basically like I mean uh, you sort the array first and then put it into a reverse what happens if you just do the, the, the reverse first and then sort it will actually give you the same result right because um, whatever you are reversing actually it does not matter and then basically like once you sort you can still get the same. So now what about um, this array essentially and then what, what happens when you sort C. So um, 
can you um, tell me like I mean what happens again this is you should think about this as also like an ascending order path but now it is uh, on the the alf alphabets so we know that actually like O comes before T and then uh, in this one also like I mean, TH comes before TW and then finally this comes so this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 this is 4 or in Perl notation this is 0 this is 1 this is 2 and this is 3 so let us see what happens so here when we do the sort 1 see that this becomes like 0 1 2 and 3. So now we have uh, another one which is like multiple numbers um, all have different uh, number of uh, numbers essentially this is just 7 this is 101 29 300 and if you do a sort what happens essentially like if the sort does not um, go by the actual value of the number but it is only a literal sort so in this one this is the first one and this is the first number this is the first number and this is the first number so it first sorts all the first numbers so it comes up with 101 or essentially it is 1 29 or 1000 and then 3000 and then 7 so the final answer is actually you can see that basically um, it only did the first number sort the remaining ones it leaves uh, open so to achieve that the real sort what here what, what we need to do is uh, we need to prepend with uh, zeros for example so make everything like four digit number so basically zero 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 seven and then zero two nine zero actually like one more zero zero two nine zero one zero one and then 3000 if you do this number then this order will be maintained and then this is what uh, we are getting as a result uh, okay uh, so I think uh, this uh, this is an interesting um, assignment or an interesting uh, example as to how to do the sorting um, so now um, let us look at uh, some more um, uh, functions essentially like chopping arrays. So uh, we can apply many operators uh, to an array, um, the operator is uh, applied to all the elements of the array. Um, so in this one like I mean so chopping is one of the, uh, the operations that uh, when we apply this particular um, operator is applied to all the elements of the array. So the net result of this like I mean so if you do a chop on this uh, particular array um, can anyone tell me like I mean what will be the result so essentially like the this element this uh, new line gets its new line goes away from this element again the new line goes away what about this one so let us see. So again remember chop removes the, the last um, character so from here this um, um, exclamation mark is removed so we only get by so if you do like a chop dollar star this is what we will get we will get the hello we will get the world and then we will get the by we will not get the new lines from the first two and then the um, the exclamation character from the, the next one. Um, so again, uh, as I mentioned, like I mean, the uh, uh, earlier the various operators have these various contexts, essentially the scalar and the array context. Um, so um, the it takes both the scalar as well as arrays as operands. It can return scalar and arrays as output. Um, if we want 
an expression to be evaluated in a scalar context um, we can force that by using a null string to it. So, so what do we what do we mean by that? Uh, let's look at uh, some of these uh, examples. So here is an array. Um, array is given as uh, x, y, z, and then we print out these elements. Basically, it just prints out the same thing. Basically, x, y, and z. Now we say essentially like okay, uh, um, how many elements are there? So again, again this prints out. We in, in include the the comma operator. Basically, like it just uh, you know, concatenates everything and then prints out. Now there is the the next one, which is uh, we are concatenating comma to the array. Now what happens? So here, essentially, it only prints the number of elements, which is now it's no longer an uh, an array context. So this is all like array context now this in this example this will become a scalar context so um, again um, we go back to the, the, the original rule so in the, for the arrays essentially like I mean again like I mean you can have the scalar context or the arrays array context and uh, the operators essentially like I mean so um, they can force um, um, we can make them evaluate as a um, whether a scalar context or an array context by just concatenating a null string to the array so in this one um, we saw that actually once we give a um, uh, a null string basically uh, in this case like I mean a comma which is uh, now treated as an operator uh, and we are concatenating that to the uh, this one uh, to this array and there now it is evaluated as a scalar and actually gives the number of elements in the array as opposed to the literally printing all the elements so here we it, it printed out all the elements whereas here it prints out, prints out just those um, the number of elements um, we also saw like an operator to print out the um, the number of elements in an array um, I hope you remember that uh, I'm just going back um, to give you that uh, information this was covered in the last lecture um, when we talked about um, Actually, it's even before all these things. Um, yeah, right here. Length of an array. So this is another way to get the array length, essentially, which is um, dollar hash array name, basically. Or here we also mentioned that the dollar size is uh, dollar array. Um, so, um, so when we specify the dollar, actually, like I mean, that changes this um, uh, the the context into a scalar context, and then basically, like I mean, we get the length of the array. So, um, I hope you remember that. So that's how um, we are printing that, and here we actually like um, printed out that with the. This is essentially like pretty much what we did uh, at this point, which is. Um, um, we are concatenating with a null string, so see here, and then that prints out the actual size. So um, think of this like I mean, we actually did this um, in the last class, and now um, essentially like we are just uh, formalizing how we did it um, by describing this uh, context essentially. So uh, let's go back. Uh, So now um, let's look up uh, look uh, at the um, 
some of the the things that we have been learning earlier which is stdin um, as you know like i mean that is the input um, to the array from the terminal um, so far we have been learning that as a, as a um, scalar context where we actually use it to uh, input one value at a time now let's see like i mean how we can uh, use it to um, use it in a uh, array context and then see uh, how can we use it in the in an array fashion um So, so in the scalar context, it returns the next line. Uh, this we saw actually in the when we studied about the scalars. Um, whereas in an array context, actually it returns the rest of the lines. So in an interactive mode, we need to use the control D that is as the end of the file end of file character uh, for Perl. So how do we use it is using these two notations so when if you do a dollar a equal to standard in this is a scalar context and if you use an ampersand a equal to standard in this becomes an array context. So as as you note, essentially, like I mean, it's basically, like what you assign it to is um, um, how it determines um, whether it's a scalar context or is it a um, it's a um, array context. So now let us look at some examples also of how we can use it um, and before that we will let us look at um, um, how what is the array variable interpolation essentially so um, um, So first of all, in the print, we already saw that actually, like I mean, um, even within the the double quotes, arrays can be interpolated, and it can print out the values. Um, so here, when we specify, like I mean, this is like you can think of, you can see that actually it's not a just a one either a numerical array or a, um, alphabetical array. It's, it's a combination of both, and it it Perl actually. Cannot distinguish between those. I mean, it treats them as the same, so it's very versatile in that sense. So that's why, like, I mean, print out A, B, C, and one, two, three. Um, when we use a slice, essentially, like, I mean, so here it's a two, three. So you know that this is index zero, one, two, three, four, five. So now what it prints out is C and one, which is the the correct thing about uh, index two and three. Um, so now um, when we do this is much more trickier now like I mean uh, when we do the slice of uh, at A and then uh, these uh, 3, 4, 5 so now what, what should it print out so 3, 4, 5 we know that it is actually like um, it is 1, 2 and 3 so when we do another at basically like I mean that is uh, it needs to print out this one, two, and three, which is B, C, and one. So let's see what it prints out. So that's the it, it prints out B, C, one. So again, I, I want to reiterate this one. So three, four, five. So first, it's basically like at A. The three, four, five evaluates to one, two, three, and then it prints out what is one, two, and three, which is. B C uh, one. 
so you can see that actually like I mean in this uh, case actually it is uh, it is actually interpolating it twice basically like I mean it is uh, first interpolating first set of values and then it goes into the second set of values and in this case like I mean if we make a mistake and say like 1, 2, 3 or something like that in the first one uh, as we know like I mean then we just print out nothing because those A, B, C are not a real values and as you know like in slice uh, function um, we cannot have um, non numeric values. So now let us see like uh, how the um, array references are done in quotes. Um, so in this case like uh, again within the quotes this is actually interpolated. So A1 is again I will mark it mark these ones as 0, 1 and 2 so, so um, you can see that actually um, um, in this case um, it will print out um, the Y because 1 corresponds to this one so 1 corresponds to Y so the Y will get printed out. Um, now let us see like I mean in another case x is equal to dollar x we are defining it as 3 and then dollar x minus 1. So what do you think uh, this should print out? So in this case again this is first evaluated and then it goes and interpolates for the, the array value. So in this case it should print out the z which is uh, what it does. Now when we do this one alone what does it print um, any answer it directly prints dollar 3 minus 3 because see now it knows that actually it is a index context but, but you know there is nothing there here so it will print out directly this. So now we have a um, another uh, question if you want to print out this like um, say in kind of expression. Um, what do we do? So, one thing uh, to note is essentially um, any this square brackets after a dollar variable is always considered as an array reference. So, if you put like um, dollar a dollar x minus three, it cannot understand that. Okay, if you want to print out literally like I mean this way it you cannot print out because it, it does not know that okay um, this needs to be printed out the, this way. So in this case it returns just um, x which is not what we want we want to see like I mean dollar a um, dollar x or 3 minus 3 something like this. So to prevent that from printing just x and actually like the stopping the interpolation of the um, the array variable itself we have to use um, either this or a concatenation or backslash like I mean all three are okay basically uh, to do this uh, one. Um, so. So what do we mean essentially? Like I mean, so um, in this uh, using the 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 the, um, the brackets essentially, so you can specify saying that dollar bracket a, and then use the 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 square brackets, and this is one way to actually avoid the confusion and uh, print literal terms basically. So in this case, like you can do this way, and then this is evaluated as one. A separate entity and does not confuse with um, um, dollar a this kind of an evaluation. So this this is one way to do it. Uh, the other way to do it will be like dollar a and then you concatenate with it dollar um, sorry dollar x minus three. So the concatenation operation again basically like avoids that confusion and make sure that um, um, 
um, um, we have the we we will get the desired effect. And then third way is basically to use the backslash, which is like one dollar a, and then back escape the square bracket dollar x minus three, and then also escape with another square bracket. So all three are can be used. Um, otherwise, it is just treated as the, the the variable with an index. So let's look at some examples. Here, x is an array, and y is dollar three. So if you do a dollar x, and in square bracket dollar three, this is actually like wrong because there is it's the single element array. So again. You know that basically a string is an array of characters, but um, when you specify like this, it's a single element one. And also, like I mean, in this one, this variable is treated as a scalar variable, so there is no array context to it, so it becomes wrong. Um, so to make sure that we can print this way, um, what we need to do is essentially like I mean, we do this uh, um, uh, back use the brackets. So in this case, it will print as array uh, element three. So again, it's printing as element three, even though this may not exist. Other way to do it is literal x concatenated with the colon index. So that's also prints out as the same array number three, and then the third one that we saw was to escape the various characters. Um, so we can use um, dollar x escape the square brackets, and then dollar uh, y minus one, and then this one this will print uh, array two or array literally like. Dollar uh, three minus one because it only evaluates this. It won't evaluate this function because there is the, these square brackets are escaped. So it just puts this and the, these values. At the same time, if uh, there was such an array as dollar x equals let's say one, two, and three, say four, whatever. So in this kind of case, basically, if you don't escape this, this if you miss these ones, then it will just print out. Um, it will first evaluate this three minus one, which is two. So this is zero, zero, one, two, and then so it goes and prints this value. So it just prints three, and then it exit. So um, keep in mind this one. Uh, this will help you with a um, lot of um, uh, bugs, uh, avoiding a lot of bugs essentially. So, um, I think uh, this is one of the key things um, that we will learn uh, in this uh, class. Um, also, like I mean, there are some uh, um, uh, Uh, some other types of arrays that we will be learning basically in new courses. Um, so um, I'm not going to go into like a lot of details um, at this point. Um, I think like I mean right now like um, we have a lot more knowledge than what we started with, um, with which we can actually like now um, really go into um, um, more um, challenging. Uh, uh, Doing some challenging work. Um, so here is one quick quiz uh, for you. Um, so at A is defined as a four uh, elements array. What is dollar A? If you specify dollar A equal to at A, what does that mean? And if you specify in parentheses dollar A, 
equals at a what that means. So I am sure that you, you may have guessed it right away that this is something that we covered in the last lecture. Um, so at a denotes the number of elements uh, basically sorry the dollar a equal to at a this assignment it uh, assigns the number of elements to that uh, this uh, one so or converting the array context into a scalar context so the answer is dollar uh, a is 4 but what about this uh, the second one essentially here it's actually like now um, it combines that so what does that mean basically so when when we specify this one this actually means the first element of um, this um, this array is assigned to dollar a so this is something that we use um, a, a, not a lot of times basically like so it is um, this so if you specify like I mean you can say say that this is uh, at array is one two three four and then basically the first element is captured in dollar a and then the remaining is like rest and then um, that is this 2 3 4 and we will see like I mean what are the some of the uh, so Perl actually like assigns these numbers these um, variables automatically so um, in the next lecture or I mean in the future lectures we will see like I mean how do we get this remaining stuff uh, because this is some, something that is um, a very very uh, commonly used operation. Um, even like I mean we can say um, um, in an um, say we will we will we'll say basically like I mean read any line and then we we'll split on something and then we can say like okay assign it to a b c in this context basically or dollar a dollar b dollar c um, what this means is basically like I mean the first element the zeroth element is assigned to a and then the one is assigned to B and then two is assigned to C and in this case like I mean if um, two does not is not there and whatever is rest the rest is assigned to C so um, this is an useful operation so try to remember this um, we will be um, also like learning more about this um, and then so this is pretty much like end of a one dimensional array um, lecture um, so um, I hope like I mean this is uh, useful um, and right now we talked about just uh, a single dimensional arrays um, we will go into more um, 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 complex data structures um, which are the multi dimensional arrays essentially. Um, Multi-dimensional arrays. Um, also, we can use uh, uh, lists and uh, lists of lists uh, to um, uh, represent these multi-dimensional arrays. Uh, we will learn about that again. Uh, a static assignment will still uh, get like a lot more uh, memory intensive uh, uh, in nature. So we will typically avoid that. But um, essentially, like I mean, we will see how um, lists. Are done in Perl in the next class. So um, I think um, that's pretty much done. So let me just uh, do a recap of um, what we learned uh, today. Um, so again, um, we started with um, uh, some other new elements in the array. Um, With uh, this basically like reverse function, um, so reverse function is essentially like I mean uh, it's an operator on an array, and um, we get the value as essentially the um, indexes being reversed in a reverse order. So if you have a ten element array, uh, when we do a reverse operation, it, it still returns a ten element array, but the indexes are um, exactly opposite so the 0th element will become the ninth element and then the first element will become the 8th element and, and so and so all the way and that is uh, the reverse operator 
then we also looked at the sort essentially like sort is an ascending order sort and it does not uh, it is not a numerical sort per se it is really uh, just an alphabetical sort um, but we can use it as a numerical sort if we give it um, sufficient number of numbers or make all the numbers uh, same length then we can make it as a numerical sort. Um, and we saw actually like I mean if we do the 7193 then it will turn the proper way and then uh, we also looked at how to do a descending order sort which is like 9731 how to get that those numbers and for that we use uh, both the function reverse and the sort and then uh, it can be evaluated together and uh, we will get the required uh, or uh, uh, required effect um, and then the even any um, string arrays can be sorted and since the sort function is uh, based on the alphabetical the string arrays will also be sorted in the alphabetical order uh, as in this case basically it will be 1 3 2 0 that will be the final number. Um, so when you sort like length uh, with multiple uh, uh, length uh, numbers uh, you have to make sure you have to take care because um, it will still sort based on the first number so that you won't get the desired effect. Then we looked at the chopping the array essentially like chop is uh, when we use uh, chop as an operator the, those op that operator is applied to all the elements of the array. So um, here when you do the chop of uh, at stuff every element is uh, getting chopped uh, with the last uh, the last character. So um, for hello and world it is just a new line those gets uh, thrown away whereas in by the exclamation mark also. Then we formalize the concept of uh, the scalar and the array context the first one basically we uh, saw as to how to represent the array uh, um, itself in a scalar and uh, um, an array context. So in an array context essentially like I mean we just let it be um, and then um, we get that answer um, as just x y z if the array's elements are those uh, elements whereas if we concatenate the array with a null character then we will get the, the number of uh, array or the scalar context which is the number of elements in, inside that array. And uh, so we we get like I mean the actual number itself. Then we also looked at the STDIN as an array because again uh, every um, variable will have this uh, scalar context and the array context. So if you specify like dollar uh, a equal to standard n, then that assumes that it's a scalar context and it returns the next line. Um, whereas if you do an at a equal to standard i n then it keeps um, getting line after line until we hit control D. So that is an in the array context. Then we looked at how arrays will be interpolated uh, in various uh, situations uh, mainly to print arrays uh, in a, in codes essentially like I mean we need to specify the codes and then uh, when we specify the array inside the code that array will be evaluated and then uh, that is what the result will be. And then uh, for slices the same thing basically slices will be evaluated uh, they will be interpolated within the code and then uh, it prints out the answer appropriately. Uh, slice also can have like um, multiple evaluations essentially like I mean so um, you can evaluate it once and then further evaluations uh, will yield similar kind of things basically so um, you can have uh, so this is this is something like I mean to keep in mind because we will learn about these kind of things in the multi-dimensional context as well. So in this uh, uh, case essentially like the um, at 345 as a slice results in the values 1, 2 and 3 which again is a slice and then those values are returned which is B, C and 1. So um, that is another thing that we learnt uh, in the um, um, in the context uh, related or how to interplay 
and then now let us look at that the other interpolation essentially like mean this is another thing that we learn. Um, so when we um, try to interpolate arrays inside of the codes essentially like I mean so it is evaluated and then basically completely evaluated and then we get the result. So for example in this one got y, y as the result um, and in, in this one we got the z as the result. And then the other thing that we also noticed was um, when we do this kind of thing just just the square brackets without any array specification in the front it literally prints out everything. So it prints out the square brackets it prints out dollar $x which is actually 3 and then it also prints out this and this minus sign so 3 minus 3. So this entire thing is uh, getting printed out. Uh, so that leads to an uh, interesting uh, conversation. Um, basically, um, once we have um, the um, the array reference itself, then how do we um, how do we um, um, use that, or um, how do we distinguish between an array reference and a non-array um, variable? So uh, there are three ways to distinguish um, uh, that is described here one two and three the first one is to use this uh, the brackets essentially so um, that is what we, we mentioned basically like if dollar a is a scalar variable we use dollar in brackets a to distinguish it between uh, a scalar variable and an array with an index. And then uh, use like dollar x minus three. Um, so um, and then uh, the second method is using the concatenation. So we instead of saying that dollar a and then like this, we use the concatenation uh, with the um, the next one. So here essentially, like I mean, so this is treated as one literal variable, and this is another variable. So whatever this variable may be evaluated, this is just represented as is, which is like this one, and then dollar x evaluated, which is three months. So it kept like that. And then finally, uh, you know, the using the backslash or an escape character. Uh, this is this one basically, like which is used to escape various um, control values. Essentially, for example, here. Um, Square brackets can be used in other contexts essentially for the representing the array index, but once we escape it, then a literal value is used, which is just the the square brackets. So using that, we can actually get around the, uh, mistaking the dollar variable for an array context. So this is something that we also want, and uh, here there is an example that we um, uh, talked about. One thing to note here is uh, when we have the dollar x as a scalar context, which is from here, if you use it in array context, um, Perl does not like it and it will error out. So, here it explains all the three methods that we I talked about essentially, like as to how to print uh, the arrays. And then uh, finally, like we also saw like a small quiz. Um, to distinguish between a scalar context and an array context for example in this one it is a scalar context. This is the example that we saw earlier so this prints out the number of elements of uh, this array which is the same as 4. And then uh, the other thing that is um, of relevance is uh, this using the um, parentheses to uh, to actually get values from dollar a or at a which is the array essentially. So from here when we assign that to a dollar a um, what we get is essentially the uh, first element from the at a which is actually element 1. So for the first one the answer is uh, a equal to 4 and for the second one the answer is dollar a equal to 1. So I think like that is pretty much uh, it for today uh, uh, once again thanks for listening and thanks for um, um, all the all the things um, okay I will see you uh, next time thanks um, bye.